This is the new Mercedes S-Class and it is a very big deal. Now that's because the Mercedes S-Class has a bit of a history of being the kind of car that moves the game on in terms of technology and safety. It's also got to be hugely versatile, serving as a limo for chauffeurs to ferry around the rich and famous. And it's also got to be a luxury saloon to go up against the likes of the Audi A8 and BMW 7 Series. Now, today I'm going to find out whether this new S-Class moves the goalpost even further. But before we go any further, why not give us a thumbs up if you like what you see and subscribe for more awesome videos just like this one. As it currently stands, there are three different power outputs to choose from with the S-Class, and they're all based around the same three litre straight six, although you've got a couple of diesels and a petrol. So the range starts off with the 350 diesel, which produces 286 horsepower, which is sent to the rear wheels through a nine-speed automatic gearbox. And if you want all-wheel drive, you'll need to go for the car that you see here, the 400D, which ups the power to 300 and 30 horsepower and again that's sent to all four wheels through the same nine speed automatic gearbox and because it's all wheel drive and a bit more powerful it'll also get to 62 in 5.4 seconds which is a whole second faster than the entry level s350d at the top of the range is the S500. Now, this is a petrol motor, again, using the same three litre straight six base, only now power is increased to 435 horsepower, and you also get a 48 volt mild hybrid system. You don't really get much of an extra shove with that mild hybrid system, though it's primarily used as the starter motor. Still, it's pretty damn quick. It'll go from zero to 62 in 4.9 seconds. But if you want a car that's more electrified, such as a plug-in hybrid, then you'll have to wait a little bit longer. If you want a full EV, you'll need to look at the Mercedes EQS. And if you want an AMG, well, hopefully they'll be just around the corner. Being the most advanced non-electric Mercedes, the S-Class is really quite expensive. Now, if you want the short wheelbase version, you're gonna be paying a little under 86,000 pounds, while the long wheelbase that you see here starts from about 96 grand. And if you want the Maybach version, which is your kind of Bentley Rolls-Royce rival, then expect to pay at the very least 180,000 pounds. Now, the good news is, is the S-Class retains its value a little bit better than the likes of the Audi A8 and BMW 7 Series on the used market. However, it still loses a fair amount of its value once it's been driven off the forecourt, which is good if you're gonna buy a nearly new one because I had a look at yesauto.co.uk and I found some one-year-old examples that were literally tens of thousands off their RRP and had only done a few thousand miles. Because the S-Class is all about minimum effort, you get an electrically operated boot release as standard, as well as one that uses gesture control. So I can swing my leg under it just like that and it opens up and it genuinely works. That's happened about two out of three times now. Anyway, when you open it up, you've got 550 litres of storage on the long wheelbase car, which shrinks by about 10 litres on the short wheelbase. That's pretty damn big and is bigger than the likes of the 7 Series and the A8. Now, because it's a saloon, you don't have the biggest opening, so you're not really going to get any washing machines or fridges in the back, but it's really deep. Perfect for lots of important business people's suitcases and briefcases and stuff. Let's be honest, the S-Class has never been a particularly exciting car to look at. And while this new model is very smart indeed, it's not what you would call striking. Still, we've got a new grille design, which is bigger and bolder than the old car. And you've also got your typical AMG line sharper styling at the base of the bumper, highlighted by this lovely bit of chrome trim. The headlights are also much thinner than they were on the old car too. The wheels we have here are the optional 21s. They come as 20s as standard, although I think both look pretty good. And if you go for the Maybach version of the S-Class, which is the super expensive Rolls-Royce rival, then you get these really cool, very glitzy dinner plate wheels and also a two-tone paint job, which is optional. 
Now you might have noticed that this is actually the long wheelbase car and you might wonder why we've got it in. Well it's because the long wheelbase is actually the most popular car in the S-Class range over the standard model. In fact 80% of S-Classes sold are the long wheelbase model and that's primarily because they're picked up by chauffeurs and VIPs, celebrities and such love having lots of legroom in the back. The back of the car is a little bit more ambiguous. While the front looks distinctly S-Class, back here we actually have the same taillight design as what we've got on the cheaper Mercedes E-Class and also on the A-Class lineup as well. But you don't get this chrome strip at the back to highlight this as the top of the range model. You even have real exhaust down here, even though then we've got the diesel. So it's not the most striking car in Merck's lineup, admittedly, but does it need to be? This car is designed to be discreet, chauffeuring VIPs around. And with that in mind, I think Merck's hit the nail on the head. While well, Mercedes has taken a more evolutionary approach to the exterior design, on the inside, this feels like a completely different car. It's all highlighted by this massive infotainment screen, which spills from the top of the dashboard into this waterfall-like center console feature. The screen looks absolutely gorgeous, and that's partly down to it being an OLED panel. It responds just like a smartphone would, and you even get haptic feedback on the lower portion of the screen. The responsiveness isn't the only thing that's similar to a smartphone, because to log into your account in the car, yes, you can have your own account on the system, there's lots of different ways to do so. So there's a fingerprint scanner, you can also type in a passcode, there's even facial recognition, and if you want to, you can log in with your voice as well. Also, check out the 3D model in the 360 parking camera because it responds in real time, making parking dead easy. The driver's display is incredible as well because it tracks your eyes to give the screen a 3D effect. Now, it's not going to show up on camera. You need two eyes to be able to see it, but it really is very impressive. And this being a Mercedes, it's highly customizable as well. So you can go for a classic display if you want. You could go for something a bit sportier. And there's even one that focuses around the sat nav. The quality of the interior is also really good as well. These seats are quilted Nappa leather and are ridiculously comfortable. And it does help as well that you can get little cushions as well for your head, which makes long journey cruising really relaxing. I'm a big fan of the wood finish on the dashboard and at the side of the doors as well. But the only thing I'm not a fan of is the gloss black in the center console, because not only is it a fingerprint magnet, but it also looks like it's starting to wear out a little bit. Back to the good things though, the steering wheel looks stunning and it's wonderful to hold. The controls are touch operated, however, you can press them as normal buttons as well, which is good, but I would rather if the touch controls had a little bit of haptic feedback so you felt like you were doing something, otherwise it just feels a little bit vague. On the whole though, the front of this S-Class is absolutely stunning and really, no matter what spec you get it in, it's gonna feel like a very luxurious product. A big part of the S-Class experience is in the back and I thought we should do it on the move as well because this is how a lot of people are gonna be experiencing the new S-Class. This is ridiculously comfortable. We're on quite a busy dual carriageway at the moment. It just feels so quiet, serene. It's just like there's nothing else out there really. You're completely isolated from the outside world. And there's also a lot to keep you occupied back here. One of the things I love, and this is by no means unique to the S-Class, nor did I introduce it, but I still love it, is that you can get a little tablet for the back seats to control everything from the music to also the seats and even the ambient lighting. So at the moment I've got it set to blue, but if I wanted to change it to green, I just quickly change it on the tablet here and it goes to green. I can also change the seat position back here as well. So if I just press seat position and I select the backrest, I can make it a little bit more reclined and bed-like. Now, if I was sat in the opposite chair on the left-hand side, in front of the front passenger, you can actually recline even further and the front seat will fold forward so you can pretty much get a bed back here. 
Now this is the five-seater S-Class, which means that we have a more conventional armrest in the center that can be folded up. Although I do think it looks a little bit awkward, but you can get a four-seat configuration for the S-Class too, which makes it just look like a Bentley or a Rolls-Royce because you've got a big center console down the middle here. And if you want to be really posh, you can even get a refrigerator in the back. Although at the moment, what we have is just a little gap for some through loading. Other things to note back here, we have underneath the armrest wireless charging for your smartphone. We've got a pair of cup holders as well. And you can also raise the sun blinds back here. So I've got everything open at the moment, but if I wanted to close up the roof, I can do so. And I can do the same for the rear window too. And for the side windows, hey Mercedes. How can I help? Put the rear sun blinds up. I'm closing the roller sun blind in the rear. Pretty cool, right? Now, before I drove the S-Class, I thought the second row would be the place to be, and that being the driver would be pretty good, but not quite as nice as being chauffeured around. But I was wrong. The S-Class is really great to drive. First of all, we've got really tight controls. The steering is lovely and feels really responsive with a nice little bit of weight. But one of the best features about the S-Class, and it's something that you're gonna to need to tick on the options list, is the rear wheel steering. So what happens is when I'm driving around a corner, the front wheels will turn with the corner and the rear wheels will turn in the opposite direction, which basically shrinks down your turning circle. It makes a very big, heavy, long car feel a lot more nimble than it actually is. It's actually really nice to drive in a set of bends as well. And if you do drive with some vigor, the seats will actually support you so that you don't go flying off either way. So let's say if I were to quickly turn right, the support, lower support of the seat here on my left-hand side will tighten up a little bit and hold me in position so I don't fall onto the passenger. It's very comfortable as well, which you would expect from an S-Class, and that's thanks to adaptive air suspension. However, the car also scans the road ahead of you. So if you come across some really nasty bumps like I'm on at the moment, it'll actually set the car up so that when you hit them, it just tries to iron them out as best as possible. Now, it doesn't get rid of all of them. I still have got the odd little judder here and there, but this is a big, heavy car A and B, we have the larger 21 inch rims on it. I think if you went for the 20s and get a little bit more sidewall on your tire, I think this would feel even more comfortable. There are different driving modes. So I've got it in comfort at the moment, just for that ultra limo-like experience. And you know what? The engine doesn't feel too bad at all. We've got the S400 here. So we've got a little bit more power than the entry level car. It's 330 horsepower and it feels like it can handle just about anything. If you want more, a little bit more of a shove, then you can go into Sport Plus. But to be honest, I don't really think it's all that necessary. Yes, it feels a little bit punchier, but because this is a diesel, there's just so much torque low down anyway, even in its most standard setting that I don't really feel like I've ever needed to go into Sport. I've got everything I want really in comfort mode. And we need to talk about how quiet it is in here as well. I'm currently cruising along at 70 and it's very hushed, very quiet in here. It's just a little bit of wind noise around the wing mirror, but you'll barely notice it. It's also made more comfortable thanks to these lovely cushions on the headrest. And I just feel like the overall cabin ambiance is one of ultimate relaxation. I've got my blue mood lighting in here, which I can turn up and down if I wanted to have it a little bit softer than this. I've got my wood trim, just feels calm. And if you get the head up display, the sat nav is so good because there's a lot of companies at the moment trying to do these augmented reality sat nav displays of where the arrows come up on the screen. And a lot of the time, to be fair, it just feels like a regular head-up display with just slightly flashier graphics. But in the S-Class, it feels truly different. When you're driving along and you come up to a turning, you'll get this 
big blue arrow that will sweep across the windscreen and point you in the direction that you want to go. Of course, it only works when you've got the sat-nav on and you don't have to have it if you don't like it, but I just think it's dead cool and really helpful and means you'll never miss a turning again. And I think what really sets the S-Class apart from its competitors is the amount of technology that you have in here. Because it's newer, it just feels like a much sharper, much more high-tech product. And there's a lot to explore in here and get excited about that you can't really do in the A8 and the 7 Series. And therefore, I think the S-Class is a bit of a no-brainer if you are after that absolute ultimate luxury for either you or your passengers. Of course, that's for the saloon market, but we know a lot of people want luxury at a slightly higher level. I'm talking SUVs. And in that regard, I think the new Range Rover, and you can watch my quick preview of that by clicking the link in the top right hand corner, I think that'll give conventional luxury saloons a real headache and it'll hold its value better as well on the used market. Of course, we've got to wait for the Range Rover to appear in production form. So for now, if you've got a hundred grand burning a hole in your pocket and you want some serious luxury, skip over the 7 Series and the A8, and get yourself an S-Class.